Now, as we've been discussing these ions, and we've kind of alluded to this already, we've alluded to making these ions, anions and cations, and basically, and going back to my discussion of the magnet, you have a magnet that has a positive pole and a negative pole. You have another magnet that has a positive pole and a negative pole, and you stick them next to each other. And when you do that, they orient themselves to stick. You've got the pluses that stick, you've got the minuses that stick. Okay? Um, pluses that stick, I better be more specific. The pluses that stick to the minuses and the minuses to the pluses. Otherwise, they repel. So this is what happens when we form an ionic bond. An ionic bond is a bond where we take a cation and a corresponding anion, and there is a natural attraction okay, of opposite charges. You've got a plus, you've got a minus. And that's, again, why salt works so well. You've got a sodium cation that has a plus one charge. You've got a chloride ion that has a negative one charge. Click. Okay, they like to be together, and so they form that ionic bond. So that's why we form ionic bonds between elements on the left side of the periodic table, the metals, and the elements on the right side of the periodic table, the nonmetals, because the elements on the left, those want to give away electrons, therefore become positive, and the ones on the right that want to receive electrons, therefore become negative. So sodium being in group one, well, what does that tell me? Well, the group number tells me how many electrons in the outer shell. So sodium, being in group 1, has 1 in its outer shell. It would love to give it away so that it then has 8 in its outer shell, okay? just like neon does. Remember, that's its goal is to be like these guys. Okay? So sodium wants to give it away. Okay? Chlorine has 7. It's in group 7. So it wants to get an electron to be like argon. And where does it get it? It gets it from sodium. So sodium gave one away. Chlorine picked it up. This one became a plus one cation. This became a minus one anion. It just so happens that due to those charges, a plus would love to be by a minus, and a minus would love to be by a plus. So they attract each other. And that's what we refer to as an ionic bond. A bond, somewhat strong, somewhat weak, okay, between two um, ions, a cation and an anion. Now, the reason I said strong but somewhat weak is, remember, well, I can break this bond. Remember I said we can get salt to dissolve in water? Yep. Okay, so it, it's a bond that can be broken because the sodium will then orient itself by the water and the chlorine, okay, the chloride ion, okay, will orient itself by the water. Now, one of the most important bonds that we talk about, well, I guess all of them are important. Okay, one of the most important that we're going to deal with, because we're going to deal with it a lot, um, was the fact of relationship of these covalent bonds. And the reason we're going to talk about it a lot is because we're going to talk a lot about organic chemistry and biochemistry okay, and how they function in our bodies. Well, a big part of that is the element carbon. And carbon is in group four. So it has four electrons in its outer shell. So it, can re it really has a lot of versatility. It has versatility related to it can basically bond with this atom and this atom and this atom. So it has a lot of versatility that way. Now what makes a covalent bond different than ionic bond is, remember in ionic bond, we gave and received electrons that, for example, with sodium and chlorine. The sodium actually physically gives up that electron, and chlorine actually physically receives that electron. That electron now becomes part of the chloride ion and not part of the sodium ion. Well, in a covalent bond, the electrons are actually shared. So instead of an electron just orbiting around one, el one element within that molecule, it orbits around both. So it's being shared by both elements that are part of that bond. And so if it's shared valence electrons, there you go. There's where the name comes from. The term is covalent. So if I have a hydrogen atom and I want to form a bond with another hydrogen atom, okay, remember what's the goal of hydrogen? It has one in its outer shell. It would love to have two. If it shares an electron, if this hydrogen atom shares an electron with this hydrogen atom, well, now this one had one to start with, and now it's sharing one more. So its first shell is full with two electrons. 
This one over here, it had an electron of its own. It now is sharing another one. Therefore, now both of those electrons are orbiting around that entire molecule. So they both are satisfied because this one has two, one of its own plus a shared. This one has two, one of its own plus a shared. So they are now being equally shared between those two. Um, so they are covalent. And so if we look at some examples of this, sometimes we share two electrons and it forms a single bond. Sometimes there are actually four electrons that are shared. So that's a double bond. Sometimes there's six electrons that are shared. So that's a triple bond. So you can see that here with the relationship we had with hydrogen. They're sharing two electrons, they're forming a bond. Now we draw that bond with a little line. And one line always means two electrons. And so this is two electrons, a double bond, two lines, two electrons per line, four electrons, three lines, two electrons per, bond, per line, okay, six electrons. So we have a double bond and we have a triple bond. Now we're only talking about the shared ones. There are still the other remaining electrons there. We understand that. But here there are four electrons being shared. Here there are six electrons being shared. Now why would that be the case? Well, if you look here on oxygen, oxygen has six in its outer shell. How many would it like? Eight. How many more does it need? Two. This one, six in its outer shell. How many does it want? Eight. How many more does it need? Two. So what if this one says, all right, I will share two if you'll share two. And so this one shares two and this one shares two for a total of four. So everybody's happy because now I have my own plus shared A electrons in my outer shell. Here I have okay, my mine plus two. Therefore, I have eight electrons as well. Nitrogen's in group five. So it has five electrons in its outer shell. It would love to have eight. needs three more. Same thing here. So this one will share three to get five plus three. This one will share three to get five plus three for a total of eight. Now here's where you can see the relationship of what different atoms want. So notice we have carbon. Carbon's in group four. So it has four of its own, but it would love to share four more to get eight. Hydrogen's in group one. Therefore, it would like to just share one more. So carbon is sharing an electron with this hydrogen. Carbon is sharing one with this one, and this one, and this one. So is carbon sharing four plus its four to get eight? Yes. Hydrogen, is it sharing one plus its one to get two? Yes. And so that's how we form okay, um, this molecule. Now, sometimes, and it becomes important in the relationship of what we're going to talk about with water, it's important to understand that sometimes, and I guess we can say in any relationship, Okay, it's not always a 50-50 deal. 50-50 okay? deal being that those electrons are equally shared. Now it's easy to understand up here with I've got a hydrogen and a hydrogen. Well, they're both the same element. So one is not going to be any stingier than the other on those electrons. Oxygen and oxygen, nitrogen and nitrogen. But sometimes there is a difference between how much pull one element has versus what the other element has. In other words, there's not equal sharing taking place. And what happens is, now keep in mind that if we are sharing electrons, we have a covalent bond. Okay, keep that in mind. If we are sharing electrons, we have a covalent bond. But if we are not equally sharing electrons, then we have a polar covalent bond. So it is a type of covalent bond. Okay, so if we really kind of drew a little tree and said, okay, bonds. And we have ionic bonds okay, formed by anions and cations. And we have covalent bonds formed by sharing electrons. We can, as a type of covalent bond, we have polar ones and we have nonpolar ones. And I'm going to explain how this, how this happens. But it results from an unequal sharing. So in this situation, what it comes down to is this term that we refer to as electronegativity the amount of pull on electrons. So again, if I have two hydrogens and they're sharing electrons, one is not pulling any more than the other. So those two electrons are going to spend just as much time by this hydrogen as they are this one. If I have two chlorines and they're sharing electrons, I got those shared electrons are going to spend just as much time over here 
as they are over here. So there's kind of an equal custody type of situation of those electrons okay, from those two atoms. Okay, but what if I have a situation where I have two different atoms and one has a greater electronegativity or a greater pull on those electrons, which chlorine does. Chlorine has a much greater pull on electrons than what hydrogen does. Therefore, those electrons still shared, keep that in mind, they are still being shared, but they're not equally shared. Those electrons spend more time hanging out over here, because that's lots more fun, okay, than they would spending time over here. Okay, now notice there is a difference, <coughs> excuse, excuse me, between this covalent bond, shared electrons, and ionic bonds. Because remember in ionic, we are not sharing. This one on the left actually gave away its electron. That's why it became a cation. This one actually received that electron. That's why it's an anion. So that's an ionic bond. They had a complete giving and taking of electrons. These are shared. Now, what determines that electronegativity? Determines by the size of the atom okay, and position of the atom. So the easiest way to understand electronegativity is electronegativity increases as you go up and to the right on the periodic table. So our most electronegative, now not remember these are relatively stable in their current situations. They found that wonderful position in life, okay? So we don't consider those. But if we go the furthest to the top and right, then fluorine is our most electronegative. But oxygen's up here, chlorine's up here, sulfur's up here. So these are very electronegative, okay? So the further you go to the right and the further you go up, okay? And the bigger that the two atoms that are involved in the bond are separated, the more that one's going to pull on the other. And that's why, if you, I'll go back to the previous slide, but if you look at the position of where is chlorine and where is hydrogen, you have to kind of check that out. Okay? So if you go, where is chlorine and where is hydrogen? Well, chlorine is way over here to the top and right, where hydrogen is over here. So chlorine has a much greater pull. And so that's why those electrons are going to spend more time over there. So what it creates is it creates kind of two poles. Now, is this like an ion where there's a total positive and a total negative situation? No. What we refer to these are as partial charges. And we use the Greek, delta, the Greek letter delta. So think of the, the, le, the delta symbol as meaning a little bit. Okay? I think that's the easiest way to understand it that it means a little bit. So if it has a delta sign with a plus, a little bit positive. If it has a delta sign with a negative, a little bit negative. Okay, I think that's a way, easiest way to understand it. Because wouldn't you agree, going back to this molecule, I have chlorine and I have hydrogen. Chlorine is more electronegative. So where are those electrons going to hang out longer? They're going to hang out more frequently over in this area. So that's a little bit, electrons are negative, a little bit negative. It's going to spend less time over here, therefore over there, that's a little bit positive. Okay, so the delta sign, partial negative, partial positive. It means that this atom is more electronegative than this atom. Now, it plays a role okay, in our last type of bond okay, that we're going to be talking about. 